この世界には人の運命を告げさる何らかの超越的な律神の手が存在するのだろうか What's up, people? It's your boy Liam here, and I'm back again for more custom model kit mayhem. My YouTube debut involved creating a custom Space Marine chapter from an energy drink. So today I'm gonna go back to my roots and paint this high grade God Gundam with a color scheme inspired by a different popular energy drink. I'm also gonna be doing some kit bashing because it's a fun challenge, and in my opinion, usually leads to a more satisfying project. Now, I think it's time for some clacks. Another boy joins the squad. Alright, so here it is, just quickly snapped together out of box with no stickers. And obviously the designs from G Gundam are pretty top tier, and this high grade does a decent job of representing that protagonist mobile suit. But it is a high grade and it is from 2010, so don't expect too much from this kit. The modifications and kit bashing I'm doing are gonna be with the waist, as well as a couple of these tiny pieces and the backpack on the rear. So let's head to the bits box. And here we have the bits I've selected. Oh wait, hang on, Red Bull gives you wings. <laughs> well, there goes that piece. Pathetic. Anyways, to get things started, we're gonna split this waist flap. I've never done it before, but it's really straightforward. You just split it in half, put it back together, and you're good to go. Next for these side pieces on the waist unit, they have holsters for the handles of the beam sabers, but I'm not gonna use the beam sabers on this project, and I found the holsters a little distracting, so that's what these blue circle pieces are for. We're just gonna put them on there, but first we gotta carve them down a bit so they'll fit. So we're breaking out the heavy duty metal files and then just attaching them with some plastic cement. All right, that should look pretty good once it's painted up. So now we're gonna deal with these front exhaust thruster things that were on the shoulder pads. And I'm replacing them with these gold bits, which I also need to carve down a little bit as well as carve down the shoulder piece a bit and attach it with that plastic cement. As I was modifying the shoulders, I got the idea to take those exhaust vent things and attach them to the legs as a kind of bonus thruster. So I keep carving and filing a little bit at a time until it fits to that curved calf nicely. Moving on to these white pieces on top of the chest unit, I didn't like how they blocked the articulation of the head, so I removed them and started modifying the pieces to my liking. And we used these handle bits from the bits box to kind of fill out the section at the back of these ridges. Which, like all the other modifications, requires various carving and filing until they fit. And as you can see, the head has a bit more articulation now. 
For attaching the wing unit, it's pretty straightforward because the two pieces line up well enough. We just need some extra supports for when I eventually glue them together. So we're gonna break out the drill and add some pins. And for these pins, I'm just using straightened out paper clips with super glue. I start them off longer than they need to be. Then I'm figuring out the holes for the chest unit. And then I eventually trim them down to the size I need them to be. These will add the extra strength needed to hold up those heavy wings. Now we can put them back together and see how it looks with all the modifications together. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out, so might as well disassemble them and get to work. Unfortunately, I wasn't careful enough and I broke a few pieces. Well, dang. I guess I should have rewatched Studio G's tutorial. Pathetic. Last step before washing all the pieces is to sand them with my usual 600 to 1000 grit sanding sponges, taking extra care around the kit bashed pieces to make sure they blend in well. And then we're gonna skewer up all these bad boys and get ready for airbrushing. The first step will be figuring out which colors we're going to use from this Red Bull can. Because I'm going to be using my G paints for this project, I've got a prime with the classic Mr. Surfacer 1200. For the blue sections, I'm using approximately a 50-50 mix of gunmetal and blue G paint. The main downside of mixing metallic colors like this is that they get a little desaturated, but I want the whole kit to have a metallic look to it, so I'm willing to make the compromise. Then the previously white sections of the kit are getting just straight up gunmetal. And the last straight up G paint we're using is dark iron for the underframe, abs, some of the wing armatures, etc. Next up, it's time for me to get out of my comfort zone and try masking. I've learned from fellow G-Squad members that you should put the masking tape down on your cutting mat first, so there's less adhesive when you put it onto the piece. And for masking curved sections, you're supposed to trace along the line with a wooden skewer, and then slowly and carefully cut with a very sharp hobby knife. Now back to the airbrush, the silver masked sections get the metallic blue from before, whereas the blue masked pieces get a metallic red mix instead. This mix has a greater ratio of red to gunmetal, because I didn't want it to look as desaturated as the blue, and the yellow pieces from this kit are also getting a coat of this red. Okay, time for the moment of truth. Ooh, that's a pretty satisfying peel there. Not too bad. I was very nervous for this step, but I'm glad it worked out for my first time. And now I know how it feels to unmask a piece successfully, just like how I've watched in so many other builders' videos. It wasn't perfect though, I did mess up a couple pieces. Give me a break, it's my first time. For the wing pieces, I wanted to go back to the experimental freehand pre-shading technique I used on my Sengoku Astray one more time, but this time use Balthazar Gold instead of plain black. My hope is that free shading with this color will help complement the pearly white I've mixed up to airbrush on top. I only used a small amount of gunmetal in this mix of G paint, because I didn't want the white to become too much of a grey. This time around, I think my free shading technique worked a bit better, but I think next time I should probably just try the regular pre shading method. Also, as always, this G paint was super easy to use and just sprayed out of my airbrush like a dream. So if you want to try it yourself, affiliate code! And with that, all the airbrushing is done, so it's time to partially reassemble and get to detailing. After applying a gloss coat, we can grab our panel liner and start filling in all those grooves with the black sauce. And as usual, we are going to clean up our mistakes afterwards with mineral spirits from the hardware store. Once that's done, it's time to apply some decals. And I wanted to use up the rest of these dry transfers that came with my Master Grade Heavy Arms, for which you simply secure the decal in place with some tape, and then give it a good old rub. Now it's time for some freehand with acrylics. I want to have glowing effects on a few parts throughout this kit, so we're starting with a white base. 
And then we're gonna really thin down our orange and slowly glaze it on, making sure to hit the edges where the glow will be spreading out from the source. Then we're gonna continue to use really thin paint and just slowly build up that glow from the center in a gradient from yellow to white. And then at the end, go back to the orange to just glaze around the edges and tidy up any areas that you don't think are quite right. Next, we're taking a different dark iron paint that I happen to have and just filling out some minor details on the head and chest. And then I decided to paint one more glowing area right above the guns. Next, I'm going for some more Red Bull inspired freehand on these smooth panels on the legs for which I'm continuing to use the really thin down paint, going for the rough shape first and then slowly filling it out. And if you mess up, that's okay. You can erase the paint with mineral spirits and a Q-tip like I had to for the other side of the leg here, as you can see. But be advised, if you erase too much, you will start to rub off that gloss coat and potentially the paint underneath. To be honest, I could have put more time into this part of the freehand, but I was mostly doing it for fun because this is a bit of a meme build. Your Gundam, your way. <laughs> for the last section of freehand, I didn't want to recreate the Red Bull logo because I thought the red would clash too much with the metallic red that would be desaturated. So I opted to go for my glowing color scheme instead and just paint a rough bull symbol on the shoulder. Also, painting it as a glowing symbol makes it a bit less technically challenging because I can be a bit messier. And it also matches the other glowing sections throughout the model, so I'm pretty happy with my choice. By now, you've probably noticed that there's a pretty obvious piece missing from the head. That's because I lost it at some point after airbrushing. <sighs> It's okay, I'll just glue one of these diamonds I got from the dollar store in there, it'll be fine. But first I put on some matte varnish. Now despite this getting pretty memey and having some messy freehand and masking work, I'm actually really satisfied with how it turned out. That diamond combined with the glowing freehand just turned him into a real majestic beautiful boy. I'm calling this a success because at the end of the day, I want to strive for completion, not perfection. There you have it, my Red Bull God Gundam. It wouldn't be a project of mine if it didn't involve a little model mayhem. Thank you very much for watching my content. Please annihilate those like, subscribe, and bell icons. And let me know in the comments what you think of my new son's shining diamond helmet. And follow me on Instagram for updates on the hashtag model mayhem challenge. That's all for now. Thank you again for watching, and please tune in next time for more model mayhem.